Hey everybody, it's Chris with Xano, and today I'm going to talk to you about sending data to Xano using JavaScript. We're going to be utilizing the fetch function today, which is essentially just a method that you can use to send and receive HTTP requests like calling an API. Now let's talk for a second about why you might want to utilize something like this. You may be saying, I thought Xano was a no-code solution, why do I need JavaScript? Well, this is more dependent on your front end. Your front end may not have a Xano connector available, and you may need to utilize some custom code to actually send data to and receive data from Xano properly. Today we're focusing on the sending piece. I'm going to go over the code that we're using. I'm going to show you exactly how it works, and I'm going to show you what's happening on Xano's side as well. One of the most popular use cases for something like this is an authorization token. So you have a user that has signed into your app, and when they do that, an authorization token is generated to keep their session valid. Now, let's say you store that token in a cookie or in local storage, and you need to pass that to Xano when a new page loads. This is gonna help you do that. Another example would be a restaurant app. Uh, a user can click on a restaurant and then when that next page loads, you can use this code to send the restaurant data to Xano so Xano knows what data to send back. There are tons of examples here and they're going to be specific to you and your use case. What we're doing today is we're giving you the building blocks to get started. So let's dive in. Okay, so let's go over this code. Let's talk about exactly what it's doing. And if you're not familiar with JavaScript, please don't worry. I'm going to try to make this super simple for you. You're going to be totally fine, I promise. I'm going to go over this in as non-technical of a way as I can. Those of you who are super versed in JavaScript, please don't come for me in the comments. I'm just trying to make it easy for everybody else. So the first line of this code is const xano underscore input. So all we're doing right now is we're defining a variable called xano input. And inside of that variable is a token. This is what, for this example, we want to pass back to Xano. You can add other inputs here if you want. So I would just type username, and my username is Chris. Just like that, that will get sent to Xano as well. So next we have a window.onload, and what this is doing is this is basically saying, if the Xano input exists, execute the send to Xano function when the page loads. You could easily modify this to be triggered on a specific action, like if a user clicks on a button or something like that. This can easily be adapted to that type of use case as well. And the send to Xano function is sending our Xano input that we defined in this first section of the code. And finally, we have our actual send to Xano function. This is what's doing all the magic. We're using the fetch function. This is where you would put the endpoint URL from Xano. We are posting we're sending that data to Xano. We're defining a content type, and we're basically formatting this data in a way that Xano can read. And that's really it. It's a very short piece of code. It's very simple to understand. Really, all you have to worry about here is defining your inputs and adding your Xano URL right there. That's all you have to do, and then you're good to go. So now that we know what's happening with the JavaScript, let's take a look at what's happening inside of Xano. I have a very simple endpoint set up here. All this is doing is this is taking in the token and the username, and it is adding it to my database table. Very simple. So let's take a look at a couple of front end examples. So right now I'm in Webflow. I have a very simple page set up here. And if I go to my custom code, I have it sending a token and a username of Webflow. I have my Xano endpoint URL right here. And to get that from Xano, all I had to do was click on this endpoint URL button, which copies that to my clipboard, and then I just paste it right in between those quotation marks. And that's all we have to do here, so we should be good to go. So if we save this, let's take a look at Xano. Let's look at our database. We'll see what's in here now, okay. And now if we publish this and we open our preview, our page loads just fine. And if we go back to Xano, we should see that record with the username of Webflow. And there it is, just like we expect. Very cool. Now, let's say we needed to get a little bit more complicated here. So let's go back into Webflow. I'm going to go to my elements. I have a little div block built here that I'm going to unhide. This H4 is going to be really important here. We've given it an ID of username, 
And then what we've done to the code is we've said, hey, instead of using this username that I've hard coded here, I want you to get the content of that H4 with the ID of username. So we have document, searches through the whole document, dot get element by ID. So find the element with the ID of username and get the text content. That's what's going to be sent to Xano. So in our H4, it says our username is Sean. So if we publish this, what we should now see is a new record in Xano that has this token with the username of Sean right below it. So let's load our preview. There's our page. Let's go back to Xano. Let's refresh. There's our new record, just like that. Now you can, of course, perform additional logic on the data that's coming in. All I have here right now is it's just adding the record and that's it. But you could continue to do any sort of data transformation or logic here that you want. Before we move on to our next example, there's one more thing that I want to show you. And that is with this custom code, you can actually show the response of that API that you're calling on the page that contains that same code. So looking at our custom code, we have this line right here I want to show you. What this line is doing is this is taking the response that the API returns and it is logging it to the developer console in the browser. Obviously that's cool, it's good to see that output, especially for debugging purposes, but what if we wanted to just show that on the page? Well, I have added a paragraph here with an ID of response, and then in my code, I'm actually going to put two forward slashes here to just comment out that line completely. And then what I'm doing is I'm still taking that JSON from the response and I'm using that same document.get element by ID, but this time I'm using it on the response and I'm modifying the text content to contain the response from that API. So we save this and we publish and let's open our preview. You can see that is the response that the API is returning. So you could continue to work with this and style it and pull out specific elements in whatever way that you want. So now that we've looked at an example of how to do this in Webflow, let's take a look at another example, in this case, Bubble. We're going to utilize our JavaScript code to send data to a Xano API. And if you're familiar with Bubble, normally you would do this using an API connector plugin. Now, there may be some reasons where you don't actually want to do that. At the time of this recording, Bubble actually proxies all of your API calls, which means that data passes through Bubble's servers every single time, which you may not want to have happen. So that means you have to utilize custom code. I'm going to show you a quick example of how you can do that. I have installed the Toolbox plugin. It's free. You're going to need this to make this work because this plugin allows you to run JavaScript as a workflow action. Now we have a workflow applied to our button. So let's take a look at that. I have one action here. It's just called run JavaScript and that's available through that plugin that we've installed. And you can see here we have our custom code. For this specific example, this code is slightly different because we need to trigger this function in a little bit of a different way. In Webflow, we were doing it on page load. That's not really going to work in Bubbles case. So what we're doing is we're still defining our variable. You can see I have my token and then I changed the username to Bubble. And then we have our function, which is using fetch. There's our Xano URL. We're posting that data. And then down here, we've added a line to actually execute. So when you write a function in JavaScript, it doesn't actually execute. You still have to call that function. We were doing it before in Webflow with that window on load line, and now we're just doing it right here at the bottom. So once we set up our workflow with the run JavaScript, let's go ahead and preview this, and let's take a look at our database. You can see we just have Chris and Sean in here, just like before. And now let's click our button, and let's go back to Xano. And you can see we now have our bubble user data in here as well. So what we've done now is we've used that same code snippet across multiple front ends to send data to Xano. Again, this video is all about giving you the building blocks so you know exactly how to send data to Xano using JavaScript. We wanted to make sure to give you as universal of an example as possible so you can take this and continue to build on it as you need. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope this helps. Definitely make sure to leave any questions you have down below in the comments. You can also reach out to us via support chat inside Xano or at the Xano community. Make sure to like and subscribe for more Xano content. 
and we will see you in the next one.